Communities in the polar north are facing all sorts of pressures as a result of a warming world. Interact is working with scientists and indigenous peoples to help them collaborate to understand the implications of an increasingly accessible Arctic. This is a region that could soon see more tourists visiting than ever before. The Sami are an indigenous people of Northern Europe, but a rapidly changing Arctic means that some community members are having to explore new ways of life. Climate change was probably starting already then, but we didn't think about that. But it was starting to be more and more wet snow in the nature. It was bad winter, so we were putting 1,000, 1,500 reindeers inside in big corals, feed them, so they're surviving. Niels turned to tourism as a way to see through the economic challenges of these difficult winters. We were never thinking to be a tourist entrepreneurs because we are reindeer herders from the beginning. It's an honour. People coming here just to want to know how do you live. Niels has spent the last 25 years running Sami-led cultural and wildlife experiences for tourists. So, uh, here are some of my friends. So it's not normal to have them inside in corals like here, but this is like an open-air museum where we have reindeers, where people come here to visit us and learn more about of our culture and the, and the rangers, of course. Millions of visitors are heading into Nordic countries every year as their popularity continues to grow. We travel every year because we're meeting people from all over the world, because I learn from them new things all the time. We have plenty of space here, and people are welcome up here really to see how we live. Although some reindeer herders have embraced rising tourism, the trend, partly driven by greater access and poor snow in the south, is worrying others. The traditional lands of the Sami are already under pressure from climate change, mining and forestry. And bringing large numbers of tourists into the mix could add to the burden on the community. But I think that the big problem is that they don't know about the, the Sami people. Nicholas is a Sami leader of an interact project working to resolve conflicts between tourists and Sami communities. They don't know about the migration patterns. They don't know about the structure of the life group, the communities. So I don't think that there's a bad intention, but there's a lack of knowledge. As tourist companies look for reliable snow, more and more activities like skiing are moving into traditional Sami herding lands. You know, in Sweden there's a reindeer herding act, and according to the reindeer herding act, it's illegal to frighten grazing rangers, especially during winter time. So when dog sledger companies are not aware of that there are rangers in the area, by mistake or by purpose, they have entered the herds and of course there's been a conflict with the reindeer owner. There's also stories about avalanches that has taken flocks of reindeers due to the effect of that they've been scared away. Sometimes by a predator, sometimes by a human. But poorly managed tourism can affect more than just the Sami's reindeer herding. We could see that cultural appropriation has been an issue in Finland especially. They are dressing them up like Sami and giving them the, the marketing that they are Sami people taking towards guests and being their host. So it's one way, it's false marketing and using a culture for it. The Sami are not alone in wrestling with these issues. Tourism is rising across the Arctic as people race to see a last glimpse of its unique nature before it changes forever. For the last 20 years, a major hotspot has been Iceland. In 2018, this nation had 2.3 million visitors, but a population of less than 350,000. And some scientists are worried about the impacts this is having on its fragile ecosystems. We have to realize that in cold environments where the growing season is short, plants usually grow very slowly. And the damage made during several minutes can take really decades to heal. People and their vehicles are causing the landscapes of some star attractions to erode. There are fears that this could be irreversible and that tourists could be loving these areas to death. Tourist hotspots can also be hubs for more than just people. One Interact project showed how plants move along roads and trails in Scandinavia, while another study suggested about four seeds are carried on a single pair of boots, meaning that tourism could be a major route for invasive species. There are on average three new non-native plant species that are reaching Iceland every year. And popular roads act as a main route for these non-native species into sensitive areas. Many of these cars carry seeds and other propagules of plants that could change these fragile ecosystems forever. Environmental protection is, is a shared responsibility 
of the whole humanity. And this applies also to the Arctic. So everyone, natives and visitors alike, should consider themselves responsible for the places they live in and visit. But controlling tourism in the Arctic will not be easy. With melting sea ice extending the cruise season in pristine wilderness areas, there has been concern about pollution. Especially as per passenger, a cruise ship could produce more carbon emissions than a plane. In Greenland, cruises are increasing. In particular, in areas in the Arctic, which is sparsely populated, we are really seeing locals feeling overrun. With visitor numbers about to be boosted by three new airports, Greenland is thought to be on the cusp of a tourist boom. On a global scale, it's difficult to understand why we should have lots of cruise ships and lots of airplanes going to places that we imagine as these beautiful, pristine, cold and, and void places. But I think it's important to remember that the Arctic is a place where people live and have to have something to live off. Tourism could offer a new living for Arctic people, helping to move away from extractive industries. On that local scale, tourism is often a really good solution and maybe also a really good alternative to, for instance, uh, mining or logging or simply moving away. But I think that if the conversation starts, how can we use tourism for what we want with our community? If that guides how tourism is developed in the Arctic for the future, that's a really good and important step. In Scandinavia, the Sami are pushing for more sustainable tourism. Working together with Interact and the International Association for Expedition Cruise Operators, Different Sami communities are gathering together to identify problems and to develop responsible guidelines for tourists and local companies. I think that these guidelines would be something that tourists have read before they come up to our area and that really respect what's in these guidelines. And we together we can strengthen the livelihood up in the north. A lot of people believe that this is the last wilderness in Europe, but it's not the wilderness, it's the home for the Sami people. You cannot romanticize the Sami way of life and saying that we are still living in Labus up in the mountains. It would be wrong to say that Sami is just something that you have on a postcard with a Sami dress on. We are alive people and we are developing ourselves and we are taking part of what's happening in the world.